If you're learning NAN to make some side money or to build a business out of it, you have been lied to. Because knowing NAN by itself is almost worthless to real businesses. Because at the end of the day, NAN is like glue. It's a tool that you can use to solve problems and drive value. But just like glue, having a tube of it on your desk doesn't really help you put together a chair. So if NAN is the glue, common business softwares are the things you glue together. Now, after working with over 91 clients and putting over 300 workflows to production, here are the 15 tools and softwares we run into the most when we do client projects. And you should get comfortable with these if you want to make real money with your NAN skills. Okay, so the first type of tools or softwares we most commonly run into are CRMs. The most common ones we see are Pipedrive, HubSpot, Close, and Go High Level. Now, going from top to bottom, usually CRMs fall a very similar structure on how they're used. You have people or contacts, you have organizations or companies, and then you have deals or opportunities attached to these companies and contacts. Now, you also often in CRMs have pipelines. So you have different stages between discovery call, demo call, proposal sent, deal one, and so on. And from software to software, this sort of foundational hierarchy is almost always the same. So if you learn how CRMs actually work, learning them inside of NAN is almost the same. Of course, there's always technical differences between their APIs and their nodes, but at the end of the day, they're all pretty similar. One of the things I will say is close, which is very common for outbound sales and organizations that do a lot of cold calling from our experience. They don't necessarily have a native NAA node. You can either get a community node or you'll just use API um, requests, but their API is, is solid. You can, you can get a lot of done with that. If you don't know how to use HTTP requests and API nodes, you can go check out the video link down below where I go into it and get you from not knowing anything about APIs to being able to do 80% or 90% of what you need to do. One last thing about CRMs is go high level is, is very common in sort of local businesses or local services, blue collar businesses for a lot of reasons, but their NAN node is kind of limited. Uh, and their API requests and the way they do their tokens and things like that is extremely annoying. And if you want a lot of versatility, you need the V2 API, which if I'm not mistaken, you need the 497 a month plan, which can um, be a little out of budget for some clients. So not the best one, but commonly used. So it's, it's good to know this. But in, in general for CRMs, they usually always follow the same sort of hierarchy, the same logic. And once you learn how to do things with one, uh, it'll be very easy for you to transfer your skills and get data in, get data out uh, with the different nodes or API requests. So the second category of kind of softwares that we run into very, very often with our clients are project management tools. So in case you don't know, project management tools are sort of where all the internal operations and, and doing service delivery or different projects happens for an organization. So things like tasks, time tracking, uh, progress updates, if there's blockers, a lot of organizations also do their actual communication on those platforms. So everything is in one place and there's usually a lot of data and they're very deeply ingrained in the operations and, and actual day to day of, of uh, different businesses. So learning how PMs work is very important if you want to make money with NAN. The nuance here is if CRMs usually keep a very similar structure, um, for project management tools, a lot of organizations and businesses have different structures, different um, sort of ways they actually use it. So there is a lot more variance there and you want to be comfortable with not just the nodes, but actually understanding the tools themselves as well. So you can take the logic, the problems or whatever your clients want to do to actually be able to automate this or integrate this with NAN. For example, if there is a marketing agency that uses ClickUp as their main project management, there's so many different ways they could set up their operations based on what they need and what their requirements are. You could have all of their clients as spaces. You could have a client space that has folders for clients. You could have a folder for a specific type of service and all the clients are different lists. There's a lot of variance there, but just understanding how these work 
So you can go into a company or into a business, take a look and understand what are the specific notes that you actually need to do is very, very important with project management uh, tools. The most common ones we see are ClickUp, which is actually a pretty solid project management board. Like I always like to um, complain about ClickUp. The biggest issue I've seen is some of their API documentation and, and the nodes that don't exist that you need to use API calls for or HTTP requests for. They can be buggy or outdated in the documentation and their support is extremely bad. So just be mindful of that. But all in all, ClickUp, not too bad to work with in NAN. Asana, we have a little bit less experience with, but we still have projects that we've done with Asana or some sort of endpoints. Works very similarly. ClickUp usually has a little bit less functionality and it's more like a task or project management. ClickUp also has documents and stuff like that. But also you can set it up similarly with a lot of flexibility, not as much as with ClickUp, but also very commonly used mainly online digital businesses such as accountancies or agencies and, and so on. And the third one is monday.com. Now monday.com is a weird one because it's very, very common, but their actual nodes, the amount of nodes that you can do with uh, NAN is pretty low. Uh, and you kind of need to do workarounds to do some pretty basic stuff. And their API and webhook uh, connectivity is actually surprisingly bad i am not a fan of monday.com every single time we do have a project or a lead who uses monday.com that adds just a little bit of extra complexity and headaches in terms of how it works it's very similar to ClickUp and asana but just the tech integration and how well it works with nan is a little bit more difficult the third category that we use very 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 often in our projects or, or in our internal workflows at Wingrowth our work management softwares. And if NAN is strawberries, then these like Airtable are cream. They just fit together so incredibly well. Now, if you don't have experience in these, the quick summary is they're kind of like databases or Google Sheets with steroids. So you can host a lot of data there, you can categorize it, and they have a lot of customization and flexibility uh, to do different things. In fact, someone who runs a 1 million ARR agency that I personally know, they are actually moving from HubSpot to Airtable for their CRM because of the flexibility. So you can get a lot of data in exactly like you would in Google Sheets, but you can add interfaces, you can build stuff internally on top of that data to make it actionable. And a lot of our clients, what we have done is actually consolidate CRMs, project managements, and data or some sort of performance tracking in one place, whether that's Airtable, SmartSuite. And they usually have really good APIs, webhooks, and HTTP connectivity, or just nodes. And you can do a lot with the flexibility of NAN and softwares like Airtable or SmartSuite. So some of the three most common tools that we run into, first of all, it has to be Airtable, kind of the king uh, of uh, work management softwares. It's very, very common and it just works extremely well with NAN. Now, the second one is SmartSuite. And this is actually way less known competitor to Airtable. We at Wingrowth have transferred everything to SmartSuite for our internal operations and we're doing more and more client projects on SmartSuite. It is very, very similar to the functionality of Airtable, but their interfaces and the added customization for actual uh, interfaces, products, or, or workflows is way better. Not only that, it also has more features that are brought over from something like ClickUp, so you can make better project management boards and so on with SmartSuite. It is way less known, and as such, they don't have an official NAN node either. This is a community node that you can install as well, or you can just use the HTTP request to, to get data going back and forth. And finally, we have Notion. Now Notion is pretty common for businesses, especially um, businesses that you see on LinkedIn or on YouTube. In terms of the actual connectivity and the, the way Notion works, I'm not the biggest fan. I'm a pretty certified Notion hater because a lot of times, the way businesses and, and people actually set up their Notion sort of operating systems, if you want to call it that, is 
they don't really use the right data structures or the components to actually integrate well with NAN, which makes a lot of the automations or whatever workflows that you want to do pretty complex. Often it's way easier to just remake that notion with the correct data structures like databases and so on to get stuff done. And I'm not the biggest fan of Notion, but uh, we have had projects where we use Notion. So I had to include this as well. Now, if you do any sort of voice agents or voice automations, the two ones that you really need to get comfortable with are Twilio and Eleven Labs. Essentially, Twilio lets you use trigger nodes on a new SMS or a new call to a phone number. So you can use this as a trigger to do whatever you want on NAN. And Eleven Labs is probably the best in class right now for actual AI generated voice. You can make different sort of uh, tones and personas. Uh, you can actually internally also build sort of workflows and, and how the actual 11 labs instance works. So you can do webhooks in and out. We did a cool voice rag agent for inventory management that I'll also link down in the description below. And those two tools are very, very important if you want to do any sort of AI voice work. One thing that it doesn't matter really what niche you're in is accounting. Every single business needs to do accounting and financial work. And two of the most common ones, softwares that you'll see are QuickBooks and Xero. I will say some of the projects that we've done, we've had to actually write code and use the code node on NAN to do data transformation or just prep the data for actual workflow and the AI. You can use Claude to help you write code, but learning QuickBooks gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of range to do a lot of the admin accounting stuff for clients as well. Same thing with Xero, doesn't have that many NAN native nodes either, and we're not that experienced with Xero, um, but yeah, regular accounting. If you're in a different country where there is a very specific market leader in accounting, that might probably be a good idea to learn as well. Uh, here in town, Estonia, we have a specific software that everyone uses as well. So getting comfortable with that obviously gives you an upper hand in your local market. The next one is communications. Now Slack is extremely common for more modern or online businesses, less so for local businesses and maybe a little bit more legacy businesses but we use Slack so much in a lot of our workflows and projects and, and automations, both as triggers and also as notifications, whether there's a new uh, output that comes through or for just error handling. You know, if a workflow fails in production or throws some sort of error, we have Slack channels where all the errors go. You can also trigger a lot of workflows, uh, for example, with tagging a bot and a lot of businesses use Slack every single day for their internal communication. So it's just a very seamless transition to integrate different softwares together or have workflows go from there. One of the things with Slack is that you, the credentials and making the Slack bots and Slack apps and connectivity can be a little bit confusing or complex if you haven't done this in the past. So getting somewhat comfortable, maybe doing some sort of projects on Slack for yourself, just to learn it is a very good idea. We use it very heavily and it's a very, very important software in our day-to-day -day and project delivery. The second one obviously is Calendly. Now there are a lot of alternatives that people use, maybe something like the HubSpot internal booking or Cal.com is another one that we're seeing more and more. The, the way they work is the same. Essentially, it's not, extremely difficult to learn, but just knowing that Calendly is a thing that is commonly used in businesses to schedule calls, uh, sales calls and client calls and so on is very good to know. And on NAN, it doesn't really have much going on. It just has two triggers on event created and on event canceled, but it's very commonly used in our workflows, especially for anything that sales or uh, internal operations related. Also tracking, of course, sales calls attribution and, and seeing where leads come for clients. Uh, knowing Calendly or using Calendly in your workflows is, is very, very key from our experience. You can't really do an NAN video without talking about specific databases. Uh, we got Superbase and Pinecone that I brought out. There are a whole lot more, but these are the ones that we have most experience with. And number one is Superbase. Now, often people use Superbase and Pinecone interchangeably. Um, the way you want to think about it is Pinecone is like a vector database and Superbase is more of a backend as a service where you can do vector databases as well. 
why you would want to use this is for, for example, for RAG agents or when you do have a lot of data that you're working with and you want some sort of AI agent or something querying the data and making sure it doesn't chunk it wrong and doesn't have hallucinations, you can do SQLs. And if you have a lot of documents or BDFs for actual uh, real RAG usage, you need to be comfortable with these databases as well. And for these specific use cases, something like Airtable or Smart Suite doesn't really work well because if you have thousands or tens of thousands of records or lines with AI, it starts chunking and it gets all funky. So learning the databases is important as well. And finally, we have the Google ecosystem. Now I'm using Google ecosystem instead of all of the tools or different softwares because the way you actually connect the APIs and, and get the authentication uh, going on NAN, if you have been playing around, you know that it can be a little bit difficult, but a lot of our clients are using Google ecosystem and Drive, Doc, Sheets. They use these every single day. We have seen eight figure businesses running just off of Google Sheets or Excel or Google Sheets. Pretty much the same thing, same logic at least. Um, and it's very, very important. Now, um, for a lot of data parsing, maybe pulling um, data from ads accounts or something like that, putting them into sheets, generating automatic reports or call notes, agendas, onboarding documents, everything like that can be done for, for Google Docs. Of course, when we have agency clients who work with clients, um, we want to make sure we do things that are automatically creating folders for on Google Drive that we can then use for triggers down the line for other automations or systems and just processes as well. So getting familiar with the Google ecosystem is, is very, very important. Now I will say a fair amount of our clients also are on the Microsoft ecosystem. So that is Outlook, SharePoint, OneDrive, so on. We are not fans because first of all, there's a lot of cybersecurity issues with Microsoft. It's most commonly attacked and we have had our fair share of sort of cybersecurity scares as well, thanks to uh, being involved in, in Microsoft projects. And whenever possible, we always go for Google. We internally use Google. Uh, it's way more intuitive as well. And some of the most common tools that you'll use with NAN will be Drive, Docs, Sheets, and Calendar. Also Gmail, you could put Gmail under communications as well, but things like uh, email triggers, sending out emails automatically, analyzing intent, AI inbox categorization agents are all common things where you need to be familiar and comfortable with Google ecosystem. Now, if you'd like to see examples of projects, automations and AI systems with these softwares, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel for different NAN demos. If you'd like to learn the seven most common systems we sell to clients, you can go check out this video. You'll learn the softwares you need to know how to build these systems and why they can be sold for $5,000 or more. Finally, if you'd like to learn more about the projects we do for real clients, we have a free school community where we share our learnings, lessons, and even JSONs. So go check out the videos and I'll see you in the community.